Hallelujah. Can we celebrate for food one more time? Glory to God. Um, um, my time has not started. Tolu, take note. Um, I need to do a few house cleaning stuff before we go on. First, um, can we celebrate my wife as we welcome her back to church? Uh, now, so you go welcome back my wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have taken note of the only person that gave her a hug. No, only one. Your own afterthought is okay. Hallelujah. Well, we miss you while you were away. Um, thank God for bringing you back. Uh, we do not take it for granted. I remember the Malaysian airline from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, going to China. I think it was a one-hour flight. That airplane has not been found today, after close to 10 years. So we do not take it for granted that um, she traveled very far. Um, went to several places, and I'm glad she's back. Ill and out is strong and fit. God bless you, and we thank God. My baby of the house, the our last born, said that she would help him give testimony in blast. Uh, so I want to give it very briefly so that I'll report back to him when we go to visit him in school that I shared his testimony. The testimony was that he did well. In school, he made straight A's, A1, um, all true. And we encouraged him. He's in final year, he's in SS3. I'll be sitting for WAEC this, this year. So I'm going to tell him that I gave his testimony. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we have a couple of um, announcements that I want to personally take. And that is to thank God and thank everyone in the church who has given towards our building project. Um, we are almost there. We are sweating, but moving. We are almost there. Uh, but I want to announce that we, we still need us to give. The time has not come for us to stop giving. I have given. I me that I'm talking to you, I have given. Um, and I've given well. Uh, but we still need all hands to be on deck. We plan to buy a, a brand new 30 kVA generator. Um, the reason why I'm saying this is so that if God is laying it in your heart to give, please give. A brand new 30 kVA generator, it costs about 9.5 million naira. Um, should the Lord lead you, please see me or see the treasurer. We are also planning to complete the purchase of the musical equipment that we want to buy, that will come to about another 10 million. I hope nobody is fainting. Uh, 10 million, right? Um, so if God is leading you to give, then we also want to buy some media equipment. We are looking at about 5 million for that. And we also want to buy light. Lights, you know, something similar to what we have here. That will cost us another five million. So give and take an extra 30 million and we'll be good to go. Hallelujah. So let's put it in mind um, as we do that. Then audacious prayers has been powerful. I'm, say, I'm telling you that for free. I, I, I remember, how many of you were in the first service where the, our general overseer preached? Powerful. Powerful ministration by our general overseer on praying and prayers. I was really blessed. I would want to encourage you to please go to YouTube or Facebook to listen to that message. I was blessed. And as our daddy was preaching, audacious prayers came to my mind. One of the things he said was a prayer, I mean, prayer is a place of declaration, a place of authority. For those of you that attend audacious prayers, I think I've explained this before. I shout, unless when I'm in a hotel. 
or when I'm abroad, so that Metropolitan Police will not knock on the door and say, excuse me, sir, then they will take me away. <laughs> but when I'm in my house, I shout. And you know why? Declarations are powerful. Declarations are important. All those things we do on audacious prayers, they fit into what our general overseer preached on this morning. So for those of you who don't join, I don't know why, but we'll keep doing what we need to do because that is what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Again, by the grace of God, how many of you were on Instagram Live yesterday? You saw Sam, John, Wafa did an excellent job. So to all our brethren in the diaspora, we will be involving them in the things we do in BLAST. Um, some of them will be participating in Fresh Oil. Some of them will be participating in giving announcement on a Sunday morning. All right? And um, we, we'll be taking advantage of that as much as we can by the grace of God. So again, on behalf of my wife and I, we want to say a big thank you to all the people that gave us gifts um, during the Christmas season. Um, we are grateful and we do not take it for granted. We appreciate your love and we, we appreciate the family that God has put us in here. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I think that is the final thing I have. Then the Global Leadership um, Summit, we want volunteers. We'll be asking for volunteers at the end of the service. I think it will be part of the announcement. Mm, hallelujah. Then again, Fumi Tomi, Tomi Singh. Adekwetu will be getting married early next month. Um, um, uh, Tommy Singh, can you stand up? Um, beautiful lady, almost as beautiful as my wife. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's all right, it's all right. He said, I'll shout go and look for your own wife or your own husband. Now, on the 10th of February will be our wedding. Um, let's support her. Now, I know you people can shout. Let put hand that your mouth, eh? Let it drive your hand inside your pocket or purse, or go to a bank and transfer. Eh? Uh -huh. Praise God. I mean, let, let let support her. We celebrate. We celebrate what God is doing in our midst. Again, we must never take anything for granted. The Lord will uphold you and uphold you, the home you are building in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go to business. Hallelujah. Okay. I'll read a scripture. <laughs> and you can make of it anything you will. I'll read 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Father, we thank you for the entrance of your word that gives light and illumination. We thank you for the life that your word brings to liberate to inspire, to deliver, and to save. Lord, we pray that your word will have an inroad into our spirits this afternoon, and our lives will never remain the same. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, this is going to be a two-part series. I'll start the first part today, then I'll take the second and concluding part next Sunday. I want you to please pay attention, and please write as much as you can. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, from the TPT translation. It says, Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything, every moment, and in every way, it will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing that you do. Hallelujah. Overflow. Abundance. Now, the topic of my ministration today is living in abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this ties in perfectly 
into our theme for the year, which is all round blessing. Now, there is an evil which has destroyed so many lives. Pay attention. There is an evil that has penetrated the church and has beaten a lot of people to submission. An evil you must stand against and say no to. You know what this evil is? <laughs> it is called poverty. Poor what? Poverty has sent many people to their early grave. I've witnessed incidents where people died because they couldn't afford to buy medication of 5,000 naira. In fact, some less than 5,000. Poverty has dehumanized a lot of human beings to the end that they begin to see men as God. You know what I'm talking about? Because you want to do something Something, something basic that you cannot do. Then a man becomes your God because the man says, if you do this, I will do this. You know, we've got to fight against it. We've got to resist it. And I'm talking about the church. Poverty has reduced the humanity of many men. Hmm. Now, so, 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 some people they think it's normal. Some people think, well, after all, it is God's will. It is more likely for a man to go to hell. It is more likely for a poor man to go to hell than if you are rich as a Christian. You can quote me any day. Because if you are poor, you will be baffing outside. And a man Standing in his penthouse, we'll be looking. Then they will grab you from your husband. You become a second wife or become the wife of an allergy. When you could be doing whatever you want to do in the comfort of your room. Am I, am I making sense? You are likely to cause a man driving that splashed water on you while driving because you are using like this Benz. But if you are in your own car, you splash me, I splash you. I'm not saying that's what you should do. <laughs> but, 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 but you see, I, I, I have seen how poverty can reduce men. So it is something you must never accept. It is something that everything in your being must revolt against. And I'm not saying go and steal because we are going to get to that point. But foundationally, fundamentally, you must make up your mind that you will never be poor. Even Pastor Ie Adebwe, I, I listened to him one day. He said it. He said, I've been poor and I'm rich. I know that it is better to be rich than to be poor. Hallelujah. So, for those of you who think that poverty is the will of God, I can tell you for a fact that God is a God of wealth. He's a God of abundance. He's a God of overflowing with abundance. And that is why we tell you the things we tell you in blast. That is why we encourage you to work hard. That's why we encourage you to dream big. That's why we encourage you to aim high. That's why we encourage you to build network, solid network. That's why we encourage you to build yourself, to learn, to explore. Those are the things that will ultimately deliver abundance into your hands. And you will be empowered and enabled to do the will of God. You see, you can do the will of God in style, you can do it with struggle. 
I have seen missionaries who are doing missionary work in style. I have one, a friend. He works for this missionary group called Every Home for Christ. Homo. They send him across the world. They pay his bills. They pay his air ticket to different countries of the world. They pay for his accommodation. At times he goes with his wife and they pay him stipend. That is one way. There is another way. You are on your own. You live in a jungle. You, 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 you suffer to eat as a missionary. That is why the children of missionaries no longer want to follow the pathway of their parents. Because they have suffered. You know the difference? Who knows the difference? Money. Money. The person that is funding every home for Christ is an American billionaire. You know, they hear me? American billionaire. But all the other missionaries, oh, go to Muoleru village. And we don't support them. And they have children. How can those children who struggle to go to school, if they ever did how will they follow in the pathway of their parents? Yet, other people are doing missionary work in style. Somebody say, I will never be poor. Never be poor. Now, that is why we, 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 we encourage you, because we, are, we operate in the world. We don't operate in church. All the dancing, 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 praying, praying, praying. We go to the world. You go to the markets to, to, to buy stuff. You rub shoulders with people in the high places. If at the end of the day you don't have the means to do the things that will build the kingdom and will impact lives across continents, you will become limited. Then we fail in the assignment that God has given to us. You know, people don't like talking about money in the church. Fortunately, and thank God that you know that I will not eat your money. You know, some people say, I won't give. Eh, eh, that's how all these pastors, eh, they are looking for your tithe. They are looking, bruh, I don't need your money. You know I work. I am well paid. I am well paid. So, in case you are here, the two cobo, 10 million, 100 million that you have, that you are like, and eh, what should I give? Bruh! Before I come to ask you to give, I have given. So I'm not looking for somebody's money, or you're not doing me a favor. Lie, lie. Ask Remy how much I have given. Do you understand? So when you have an opportunity to give, you don't do it as if you are giving to a beggar. You do it with joy. Hallelujah. You will never be poor. Don't ever accept poverty as your condition. It may be the condition of your family, may be the condition of your parents, but it is not my lot in life. You must reject it too. Because you need to be empowered, enabled to do the work. Luke chapter 8. You can, look, you can flash it here. Luke chapter 8. Let, let, let me show us something. Luke chapter 8 verse 1 and 2. Or 1 to 3. So that for those people who think that poverty doesn't really mean, bro, it means. It will limit a man. Luke chapter 8 from verse 1. You people, are you showing it? Look at one. It says, soon afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him. Verse 2. We're going to 3. Now look at verse 2 and 3 very carefully. It says, along with some women 
who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, now talking about women. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Verse 3. Johanna. Oh, God bless you, man. Johanna, the wife of Chusa, Eros business manager. Business manager. No business servant. No boy boy. Not office assistant. La Kapukuta. Herod's business manager. Herod was the king. Hey! Bro, you must be a manager. Herod's business manager. Susanna. And many others. Who were what? Contributing. From their own resources. To support how many people? Thirteen. Minimum. Because I know Jesus had so many disciples. But this one says, contributing from their own pocket. A poor man cannot support. Contributing from their own pocket to, re, to, to support Jesus and his disciples. Now, Jesus had everything, his God and all that. But there, there was a principle being expressed here. That the reason why you have the resources that you have is to support kingdom business. You know what I always say? Nobody will carry one dime to heaven. One! I remember the story of a man that I knew. He's late now. Very rich man. Don't know whether he was born again. He had close to 20 vehicles in his compound. I'm, I, I, are you hearing? This is not them say, them say. I saw. And I asked him, ah, You like cars, though? Oh, yes. This one I bought in this place. This one, this. This one, this one. Give me the history of all those cars. He died. All those cars are still there. One tire he did not carry. That is why I would rather spend. And be spent for kingdom. That is why I can be generous towards kingdom work. Because when I die, there will be treasures waiting for me where? In heaven. These people supported Jesus' ministry. Let's look at a few scriptures before we talk about principles. Third John chapter 2 says, I'll just run through them. Beloved, I wish above all things, this is God speaking through the mouth of John, I wish above all things, all the things you are doing, all your dancing, your, I wish above all, that what? That you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. This is God, that I wish, my desire, my longing is that you prosper. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get what? To get wealth. Not to get poverty. Not to manage. For it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant with you. Right? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 12. Ecclesiastes 7 12 says. For wisdom is a defense. And money is what? A defense. But the excellency of knowledge. Is that wisdom giveth life. To them that have it. See. Money will defend you. Since a blessing came here and, and shared testimony, we moved from one apartment to a bigger apartment. Ask her how much. Ask her the comfort. Ask her about the convenience that that will deliver to the family. You see, it's not just about showing off. Nobody is showing off. I have my own house. I, I built a country home. You get why? He's not show off. For everything, there is a purpose. 
You must do the, 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 the work of the kingdom from a position of ease. It makes it easier for the work to do. It makes it sweeter to serve God. Why must you always be sweating when you are serving God? Can't you cross your leg, put on your AC, be drinking your coffee, as you are attending online meeting? Must you be battling with neighbors? Or oh, keep quiet? Are they inside room? Are they, are they have meeting? Or oh, keep quiet? A neighbor keep quiet? Are they room? Bro, get out of that room! Get out of that room! So when they ask you to do something, you are, you are, you are palpitating because you know, you know John and George and, and, and Mary outside your, 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 your room will be making noise. Somebody say I will never be poor. You see, we need to tell you so that you will do what is necessary. To move from where you are to where God wants you to be. You know how many times I've changed jobs? You know how many times I've changed jobs? Somebody say, you're always moving, moving, moving. I say, he get why? He get why? He get why? From Libya Assurance, I moved to ABM Merchant Bank. From ABM Merchant Bank, I moved to Platinum Bank. From Platinum Bank, I got scholarship, went abroad, came back, I moved to Ban PhD. From Ban PhD, I moved to Echo Bank. From Echo Bank, I moved to Orlando. From Orlando, I moved to where I am. He get why? He get why? Poverty must not finish me. I had to fight it headlong. I said, guy, I come against you. So that when you are building a church, I can put my hand in my pocket and put good money down. We can't be calling 10 million, 9 million, and somebody is looking away. Bro, look at me. Don't look away. Don't look away. No money can intimidate me. If God, is, if God wants to use you and you are not being used, God will use me. Bro! Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 19. The Bible says, A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is the answer for everything. Now, I'm going to put in a balance so that you will not run away with one leg so that they will not knock you. Right? Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. KJV says, Cry it, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, my cities, cities in plural, through prosperity shall yet what? Spread abroad. Bro, you spread by prosperity. Poverty grounds you. When poverty hooks you, you go nowhere. When you are rich, you can fly anywhere you want. I, somebody listen to me. You want to go to Abuja, you get on the road. Why? Ah! I, will say, I will not be poor. A, 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 a one, one hour flight. You are on the road. Twelve hours. Bruh, I will not be poor. Now, that was my lot before. When I was in law school, young shall grow. Thank God I grew. Young shall grow. At times you will take night bus. People will travel by air. While you are at Ore or Shagam, person when they go Abuja by flight, don't land. At Shagam, you enter Ore. Ore to Bini bypass, high pass or low pass or whatever it is called. From beneath bypass, oh, you know it. From beneath bypass, you enter, you enter worry. Those are the people taking all those night buses. You enter worry. <laughs> you enter worry. From worry, you enter point of no name. 
You just know that you are moving. And they ask you, where are you now? You say, we are on the road. Bro, which road? <laughs> say, I will never be poor. <sighs> but you must desire it. Now, it, it, may be, it, 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 may be, it, it may be humorous, but when you know what people go through, you know, my housekeeper traveled back to her village during December. She, she went to Kaduna. It took her two days to get to her place. Flight, Lagos to Kaduna. Parapata, one and a half hours. Bro, two days. With the risk of Boko Haram, risk of bandits, risk of kidnapping, risk of accident. Ah. The Lord will help us. You see, that's why you have to do well. That's why you have to do well. Now, let, 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 let's talk about some principles, then we'll hang it. Then we'll continue next week. Let me share with you some principles. Number one, you must have the right perspective about money. You must have the right perspective about money. Money is not bad. Money is not evil. It is the love of money that the Bible condemns, not money. You know, some people will tell you money is the root of all evil. It's not money that is the root of all evil. It is the love of money. The money where you get, which you cannot spend, because you are afraid of the rainy day, even though we are in a matan. You must have the right perspective about money. Money is good. Most of the people that God used in the Bible, most of the patriarchs, they were very rich people. I hope you know. I hope you know. We'll get there. We'll get there. So money is a good thing. It makes life, life easy to cope with. Am I communicating? It improves the quality of your life. If I want to go to Abuja now, I will never get on any road. Even if I'm going to Abia, Ebony, Portaco, I can't. I, the only road I go is to Ajebo. That's the only because there's no airport. Because there's no airport. Why must I stress myself and drive and drive two hours? To get to Ajeba from Lekki, why? But there's another level I can get to, the level of private jet. Right? Okay. I have not, I have not, I have not convinced myself that I need that now because I don't really travel much. But if I ever get to that level, I will have one. I will have one. But for you to get on the road 12 hours, you have already reached that level. To be flying. So don't say in your mind, me too, I never read the level where I'll be taking plane to Abuja. You don't reach. Tell your neighbor you have reach. Uh, you have reach. Money must not be consumed on your personal loss. The reason why you ask God to bless you is not because you want to show somebody you have arrived. It's not competition. You don't want to have money so that you enter your car, they will be pressing pom, 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 pom. They will arrest you. Because it's not competition. Remember the rich fool who said, ah, my goods have increased. My barn is overflowing. I will pull it down. And I will build a bigger barn. And I will say to my soul, also, Relax, rejoice, do this and do that. And God said, thou fool, your soul is required of you today. You know why? He was thinking about only himself. Am I communicating? He was thinking about only himself. The reason God empowers you, you saw it in Luke chapter, chapter 8. Those people who had money, they were investing that money in kingdom business. 
You know, I can't stand here and tell you the things that I do. But I'm super grateful to God that he has enabled me. It's not about me. It's not about me pulling down where I live and say I want to build something else. No! It creates an opportunity for me to do more, more in the lives of many more people. That is who I am. That is what I live for. That is what I will answer to God on the day of judgment. That waiting will give you account. I will give account with my full chest because I have not consumed the money on my lust. Am I communicating? And I'm not saying this to boast because there's nothing to boast about. There's nothing that any man has that he was not given. There is nothing like I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. There is nothing like that. God made all of us. He put people in our lives to help us. But after you have been helped, what do you do? You want to show off? Tell people that you have arrived by a Rolls Royce that you cannot drive, that the portals in Lagos will destroy? Or what are we talking about? Am I communicating? How many times have people told me, this your car is old, this your car is identical. As long as that car is functional, leave, leave the car, leave me. To buy another car now will, 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 will cost not a good one, will cost nothing less than 40 to 80 million naira. Okay, can I afford it? If I want it, I'll say, God, I need it, and I'll get it. But if I have a car, if I have, my wife has, we have an extra that we need to warm so that the, thing, the battery will not die. Why do I need to buy another car? To impress who? Eh? Who? Nobody. I don't need to impress anybody. So money must not be consumed on your personal loss. Money must not be spent on self-aggrandizement. Number, number, no, no, number C point under that number one is that money is an enabler. Money is what? An enabler. And I've told you that if you have not gotten to that level where nations are being sustained through you, you have not started. You have not started. Oh, you have not started. You have not started. When you are giving to nations, when you are supporting people across continents, when you are sending many to school, when people who would have dropped out of school are being sustained by virtue of your generosity, when people who have no hope are giving hope because you lend a helping hand. If you have not gotten to that level, you have not started. That is why money is an enabler. Because that money will help you to sustain lives. Because you can't support anybody with poverty. I was asking a young lady the other day who came to see me. I was talking to her parents who were missionaries. The young lady came She's in medical school. And I said, how much is your school fees? She said, 180 something thousand naira. I said, fine. I hope all of you people are able to. She said, some of our classmates dropped out because they could not pay 186 thousand naira. You know what she said? She said, now they have increased it. I said, how much? She said, 400 thousand naira. So the people that could not afford 186, how would they afford 400? In this same Nigeria, and you are there, you know, bother you. Ah, you just face a pallet and go, bro. That, that cannot be your lot. There are people you need to help, but you cannot help if you are not empowered. You see, apart from helping people to fulfill their destinies, you get the kind of fulfillment where you go get that money cannot buy. Am I communicating? You will have some level of fulfillment that is deep 
that nothing can ever replace. That is true living. It's either you are existing or you are living. When you are living, your life, they touch lives. Your life, they touch lives all over. That is true living. Let's move. And of course, secondly, I, I, I'll stop before this time so that we, we, we'll continue next week. Having money is not unspiritual. I have said that. That the true test of spirituality is not poverty. You know, some people think that the people who are rich will go to hell. Like the rich man that went to hell. The reason why that rich man and Lazarus, why that rich man went to hell was not because he was rich. It was because his heart of compassion and humanity was dead. He saw a poor man that needed help. And this man could not reach out to say, ah, Lazarus, do you mind if I help you? Do you mind if I give you food every day? Do you mind if I take you to the hospital and let them clean, clean you of all these wounds? Do you mind if I put you in an apartment like that woman? I forgot the, the, the name of this woman that saw the man of God just walking, 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 walking. And she said to her husband, hey, there's this man of God do. Can we put, can we can we make accommodation in our house? Just a little room. Put a bed. Put lamp. Put this. So that the man of God can come in and we can feed him. Compare that kind of woman that was rich with this foolish rich man that saw Lazarus but his heart of human compassion was dead. That was why he went to hell. Very selfish man. You can't have money and be selfish. You may end up in hell. Because the reason why God put that money into your hands is not because of loss. It's because he wants you to touch other lives and build the kingdom. Hallelujah. The Bible says when we do all this, we build for ourselves what? Treasures in heaven. I don't know what those treasures will be. I don't know what... Somebody get on the keyboard. I don't know how the, what they will look like when I get to heaven. But I know I'm going to get into that heaven and I'm going to hold my head high and walk pr proudly. Treasures are waiting for me. And I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that to challenge you. That the reason why God will raise you, why God will lift you up, is that your life must touch other lives. Not for you. To go to a club and pour champagne on your hand and be using champagne to wash hand. Look at Abraham. In Genesis 13, the Bible says, Now Abraham was rich in cattle. He was loaded. Message translation. Loaded with cattle and silver and gold. The Bible says he was loaded. Abraham. The same Abraham, the father of all nations. He no be poor man. Isaac. Genesis 26, 13 to 14. The Bible says, Isaac sowed planted crops in that land. And took a huge harvest. God blessed him. The man got richer. Message. The man got richer and richer. By the day. Until he was very wealthy. He became richer and richer. Until he became very wealthy. Boaz was called a mighty man of wealth. David was a king. He had a lot of resources. Solomon, one of the richest men that ever lived. Number three, and this is where I'm going to stop for today. Avoid desperation. Desperation for money has led people to compromise their destinies. True or true? True. How do you know people who are desperate? They are the ones who want to make money at all costs, including mortgaging their own souls. And that's why you see a lot of Yahoo Yahoo people, young people, 
One day, my wife and I went to Masha area. And as we were going, we saw a young child. Between 20, I don't know whether that guy was even up to 20, but let's say between 20 and 22. He was wearing pampas. He wasn't wearing anything. Other than pampas, all these old people's pampas. He was carrying calabash with a leaf. And he was carrying it in broad daylight around 4 p.m. You know what did happen? Desperation for money. Any wealth or money that is obtained by fraud or deception, including Yahoo Yahoo, or by stealing, taking what does not belong to you, or by scam, trying to deceive people, trying to scam people, thinking, say, you, you dare wise, hmm. or by sin, prostitution, or hookup. Or by ritual means, we take a man or a woman to hell. Now, God is a God of process. God is not a God of get rich quick overnight. When people see money in your hands, they should be able to trace your story. I've told you my story. Of where I started from, 12,000 Naira to 19, to all the banks that I worked, to all the things that I did, until God brought me to where I am. If you ever see a man poor today and rich tomorrow, there's a problem. Desperation is what makes men steal or take advantage of gaps in corporate organizations or collude with vendors. A vendor does business for your organization and the price is 400000 and you collude with the vendor and say, oh God, instead of 400 put seven, the 300 on top. You give me 200 you take one on top of your own. I'll get cool 200 They will catch you. Somebody say Amen. That is no prosperity. That is fraud. That is wickedness because you are stealing from a company that is helping you. Some contractors will come to you and they will tell you, if you give us this contract, I know say now you dead dear. If you give us this contract, any profit we make, we're going to share. We'll be giving you 10%. We'll be giving you 20%. If you agree, you have offended heaven. Any money that you must make must be clean, traceable, and unimpeached. So don't let desperation push you into doing evil because you want money. If you must take Gary, take Gary. I have told us here that there was such a time that this woman, my wife, and I, we drank Gary. Seven months pregnant with our first child. The only thing we had was Gary. And we drank that Gary. Now, those were the early days of our marriage. But you see, we knew that we had a future. We knew that God is a God of process. We knew that we would never die poor until we got to where we are. So don't join anybody to do evil. Don't steal. Don't deceive men. Don't do fraud. Don't do corp. Because they use people who do hook up for juju nowadays. Whatever you have, live with it while believing God 
for where he's taking you to. Because life is a journey. Am I communicating? Am I making sense to you? A man will look at you. You're a beautiful girl. I can take care of you. I will do this. I will do that. And you know where he's going. And you say, hey, well, I'll do only once. And if he gives me this one, 100,000, I buy shoe, I buy bag, I buy shoe, I buy bag, I buy... That shoe will, will, take, will take somebody to hell. Shoe bag. Shoe bag. Your destiny. Now it doesn't add up. Now, I'm saying this because in Blast, we have lots of beautiful ladies. Now, don't let any man doing key like this. No grief for such men. This year, don't grieve. Don't grieve for them. When they come, Tell them, bro, I disagree. Because my destiny is more important than the money you want to give me. And if you're a young man, oh God, calm down. And if you're a young man, you have friends that have invited you to come and do Yahoo Yahoo. Or come and use somebody for ritual. God will catch you. The devil will catch you. And the Federal Republic of Nigeria will catch you. Let's stand up on our feet as we pray. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray. Oh, somebody lift your hands to heaven and say, God, God, I look up to you. I refuse to be poor. I will never be poor. Where I am is an apology to where you're taking me to. I will go through the process. I will endure. I will persevere until my revelation is, is announced to the world. I will endure. I will persevere until I reach where you want me to reach. God, I will not quit on this journey. I will not compromise on this journey. Father, I set my eyes on the goal. I set my eyes on glory. Lord, I am in motion. I am on a journey. I will not join evil. I will not participate in evil. I will not do gambling. I will not do bet. Nara bet. Niger bet. All bet. Lord, I refuse. In the name of Jesus. Oh, ask God to help you. Ask God to help you. Ask God to help you. God, I will never be poor. You will help me. You will help me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. I want you to say this prayer. Say, God, I will not compromise. I will not exploit any gap in any organization. I will not do Yahoo Yahoo. I will not do ritual murder or ritual money. I will not do hookup. I will not do escort services. I will look up unto heaven from whence cometh my help. Lord, I lift my eyes unto you. Open your mouth and pray. God, I lift my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Lord, I will never be desperate. I will never be desperate. I will wait on you. I will wait on you because you will bring me to my resting place. You will bring me to my resting place. And as you bless me, Lord, I will be a kingdom builder. I will be an influencer. I will impact destinies across nations and across continents to the glory of your holy name. Glory to Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord as we celebrate God. Hallelujah.